time to finally get around to doing this. This is the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G. It is an APU from AMD. It is currently the fastest APU that they sell. It's OEM only, and the only way you can get it is if you buy a pre-built machine, such as the Zenta machine that I purchased a few months ago. So this is a bit of a powerhouse when it comes to gaming. So let's have a look at the CPU performance and the gaming performance compared to some dedicated graphics cards. The performance obviously isn't as good as dedicated graphics cards, but it does beat some of them. So I will put a comparison and show you where this one lands. But for right now, the specs of the CPU are, it is an eight core 16 thread CPU, running at a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, with a boosted clock speed of 4.4 gigahertz. It has eight meg of cache, and is a Zen 2 CPU created using the TSMC's seven nanometer process. It is a course for the AM4 socket, is unfortunately not unlocked and it has a TDP of 65 watt but it can be configured down to 35 or 45 watt but that is more for the iGPU than it is for the CPU. In terms of memory it sports up to 3200 megahertz DDR4 and has a max channel support of 2. Depending on your BIOS you can have faster memory of course but that's what the CPU is rated for and on the GPU side, it uses the Vega architecture and it has eight GPU cores running at 2100 megahertz. Now the board we're going to be using for this CPU is the ASUS Prime B550MK Micro ATX board. It's a very simple affair. It has, you know, your standard SATA ports. It has two M2 slots, has four DDR4 slots, and pretty basic all round. But it does a job what we need. Almost non-existent VRM cooling. So we'll have to see how this goes. But the reason I'm using this board is because this is the board that came with the CPU. So if you're going buying an OEM machine, and you're trying to save some money, it's pretty likely that you're gonna end up with something like this, or something from HP or Dell, which is gonna be a similar basic board. So this is about as fair as I can make it. It's also worth noting this CPU itself came with this very cheap RAM, but of course the CPU itself is rated for 3200 megahertz, of course you can use up to 5000 megahertz which does increase the performance of the iGPU quite substantially but for today I will be using 3200 megahertz RAM and I'll be using the same RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz so you can see the performance difference. The reason why I don't have any more expensive RAM is quite simply because I can't get any but right now Let's put this M together, plug it into the capture machine and see how it goes. Well, let's start off with some simple CPU benchmarks. In CPU Z, we get 531.5 in the single thread and in multi-thread we get 5726.3, which is similar to a Ryzen 7 3700X. In pass mark, we get a very respectable 21,627, and in good old Cinebench R20, we get a very good score of 4,207. And to continue with it, here is the 7-zip benchmark, and as you can see, it is getting 68,284 MIPS, which is pretty impressive. Next, in PC mark, we get 5,578. I'm just going to quickly show the individual scores. So in the app startup, we've got 9,852. In video conferencing, we've got 8,510. In web browsing, we've got 8,520. In the spreadsheet score, we've got 9,849. And in writing, we've got 6,679. In the photo editing, we've got 9,307. In rendering, 
6655 and in video editing we got 4434 so overall pretty respectable sticking with rendering in the blender benchmark we get a scores of the following so in the bmw benchmark it renders it in three minutes and 17 seconds in the classroom it's nine minutes in fishy cat it's four minutes and 25 seconds in coro it is six minutes and 33 polyvian it's nine minutes and 37 and in victor it's 17 minutes and 38 seconds so overall that's pretty good moving on to some graphical stuff uh, i have benchmarked the overclocked version of this GPU to 2300 megahertz using some slightly faster RAM so all the results from here on out include that. In time spy we get 1654 and overclocked we get 1803. It's pretty close to the RX 460 at that point but as you can see it's still faster. It's a similar story in Firestrike and the other benchmarks it gets a reasonable score beating stuff like the GT 1030 and the GTX 750 Ti but it can't quite get to the RX 460 so that's not a surprise but it shows the level of performance this iGPU is at. In Passmox 3D Mark it's similar but it doesn't quite uh, beat the RX 460 as you can see here still and it the GTX 750 Ti does perform better in this test and it's on par about the GT 1030. It's a similar story with Final Fantasy 15. It scores 2839 at stock, which beats the GT 1030, doesn't quite beat the GTX 750 Ti and doesn't come anywhere near the RX 460. So this game seems to like fast VRAM, so this isn't a shock really. It's a similar story with Final Fantasy XIV, this probably isn't a massive shock due to its age, I mean it is 10-11 years old at this point. It scores 5906 and it doesn't get anywhere near any of the dedicated cards. Once again this game seems to like VRAM but it's always just, it's not exactly RAM hungry, it just likes fast RAM. Moving on to Far Cry 5, typical Ubisoft title, likes a lot of VRAM and likes a lot of clock speeds so the 4750 gets 20, about 25 fps on ultra at 1080p which is about the same as gtx 1050 ti which only has 2 gig of vram so that's about where we're at here with this game obviously beats the gt 1030 but the rx 460 once again beats both even in overclocked but with faster ram you could probably beat the rx 460 with this igpu now in an older game like Alien Isolation, you can see that the performance of the iGPU is better and pretty much is equal to the RX 460 and the GTX 750 Ti and with faster RAM you probably get a little bit more performance but since this game uses very little VRAM anyway compared to most games, I think this is about where you're going to get and most of the performance you're going to gain is from overclocking the iGPU. But the performance here is pretty good and on par with most of the dedicated mid-range cheap cards you can get today. Now at the complete other end of the spectrum, here is Doom Eternal that likes a lot of VRAM. I set the RGPU to 4 gig here and play everything on Ultra. As you can see it gets around 34 to 37 FPS average depending on if you overclocked it or not, which is better than the 4350G, but as you can see it's about the same as the RX 460 in this case, which is pretty impressive and it obviously beats the GTX 750 Ti and the GT 1030. Even though those two cards have to run this game on low because of the lack of VRAM and it still outperforms them. Now let's go back to 2007 and look at Crisis because why not. On high with no anti-aliasing, this um, game runs very well on most things and as you can see here on the iGPU we're getting 60 FPS when overclocked. Not as good as the RX 460 but it beats the GT 1030 and nearly equals the GTX 750 Ti but this isn't particularly a fair test because at the end of the day it is crisis and it is very old this is more just a curiosity. Now granted that was a bit of a mix I was only using 3200 MHz RAM because I can't get anything faster I'll just make that point clear. 
Um, I overclocked the RAM to 3600 megahertz to get a little bit of a boost on the iGPU in some of those tests, as I mentioned earlier. But even at 3200 megahertz, the performance is phenomenal. And that's the recommended speed for this CPU, so there's no shame in using it. And it comes, in terms of performance, round about the RX 460 GTX 750 Ti. Obviously it's got as much VRAM as you can give it, so that's an advantage. So it's a very fast iGPU, it's amazing really. The CPU performance also phenomenal. So using this as a business machine, with no dedicated car attached to it, you can plug up the three monitors into it and you're off. So it's great for a business machine and I can see why these are OEM only from that respect. It's a shame, but I can see why they went that route. And that's really all I've got to say on this CPU and GPU. If you can get your hands on one, they are well worth the cost. But if you can't, it's probably worth waiting until the next generation or getting the previous generation because the performance on the previous one isn't as good as this, granted. But at least you can buy them. And they should be moving away from Vega in the next iteration. So I suspect the performance jump there will be quite substantial. It is worth pointing out as well, the power consumption of this CPU is about 88 watts, which is obviously much higher than, let's say, the 4350. They only consume 55. It's not a surprise, but it's just worth you know, adding a point there. Well, that's really all I have to say on this particular CPU and iGPU. If you want to see more, please leave a comment below. I can look at various other things. But the performance is very similar to the 4350G, and I've already done a bunch of videos on that. It's just a bit faster than those, so yeah, that's what you get, which isn't a surprise. So thanks for watching. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them below. Of course, like this video if you want to, and dislike it if you want to. Feedback's always great. And if you want to see more, to watch some other videos, and please subscribe for future videos. But that's all for now, so goodbye.